Welcome ladies and gentlemen, we are here at Cape Cod International Raceway for the 16th race of the season. It's the second road course of a five road course race stretch as we end off our East Coast Swing. This is one of five road courses on the schedule where there will be standing starts right before the start finish line. The next race up after Cape Cod that features this is the next race at Burlington. Um, but then we won't see it again until we go to Yas Marina and Tula during the International Tour and lastly at Provo, Utah during the West Coast Swing. So those are the five locations. Anyways, let's get to your starting lineup here really quickly because we're going green right after they fire engines. Ryan Brommer and Andrew Rich are the so-called front row. Starting third, Jonathan Zorlin. Fourth, Adam Flickinger. 5th, Casey Nanako, 6th, Sky Commons, 7th, Eli Bright, 8th, Jesse Turner, ninth is Hunter Braxton, and 10th is Quentin Moore, who has missed three, two or three straight races now. I believe we're up to three. So anyway, that is what we're looking at. And here's the command. Standing starts are always interesting. There's the green flag. We are going, going green. No one stalled on the start. That's always a good sign. So seven lap heat races here today at Cape Cod. So time will be of the essence. We'll see who races their way into the second road course of the season. This is definitely a more technical course and not as much high-end draft-reliant racing uh, like we saw at Papyrus. Tires are going to matter here, as will skill. As Brommer and Rich continue the battle side-by-side -side for the lead. Rich not giving up at all. Solon's just kind of chilling in third right now. Ooh, and Rich has to back out. It's a really tight left-hander there from his angle. And now that puts Sorlin to his right side. Will Sorlin clear? Ooh, Sorlin gets really loose. And Rich and Sorlin battling side by side now for second. And Sorlin will take the position away. Winning heat one at Papyrus was Hunter Braxton. And there's the entrance to pit road right there. So not sure what lap we'll see these drivers pit. I believe on 2X they go about 11 laps or so. So it should be around lap 4 or 5. On 4X. So Brommer in command in the lead. Everyone seems to have made it through the first lap just fine. So now we'll start singling out and seeing who can make gains here and there. As Commons is peaking on Eli Bright for fifth. It's definitely not easy making passes at road courses. So it's going to be very interesting how drivers make these passes, how they set up those passes. Pitch strategy could play the biggest role in determining track position gains. And taking no tires versus two tires could definitely help improve your run. So far it looks like the top three are pulling away from the Nako and the others. Right all over the bumper of the 12. Trying to maybe find the way past the Team Penske car. The main event will be a 21 lap affair just because it really takes a long time to get around here. 
very slow technical corners. As you see those lap times there on the screen. And Bright ran a 151.3 because he started farther back in the field. We'll see what the legit lap times are this time. And that gives you a really good idea of who's fast and who's not. Ooh, and Bright gives the bumper to Nanako going into turn one there. Or 1A, 1B, whatever you want to call it. It looks like Sorlin has the fastest car. Meanwhile, Rich is not as fast as we initially thought. But let's go up to Sorlin. Sorlin's pressuring Ryan Brommer. And as we switch from the fastest lap screen to the leaderboard, watch, let's see how similar it is. Not very similar. It looks like the 6 and the 60 are pretty fast, but yet they are not top 5. And if we see anyone get lapped, it could come at a track like this. But Sorlin holding strong there behind Brommer. Rich kind of just in the wakes. But Nanako and the others very far behind. So right now your bottom four are Marty Johnson, Sane Beckett, Donovan Cage, and Slade Jagger. Johnson's been moving up through the standings. He got up to 34th after last week. He's still another 63 points from 30th in the standings. Got to try and get to the top 30 if you're going to win a race and make the playoffs. Like we said, Quentin Moore has missed three straight races. He's down to 27th in the standings now. So none of the top three are going to pit here coming to lap four. It's going to let me keep looking at the points here as they go into turn one, turn two, whatever you want to call it. So I'm trying to figure out again how many drivers we've got that are have made every race. And this is how I'm just going to uh, name them off and name where they're in points. Uh, the top three in the points have made every race. That's Matthew Logan, Dylan Young, and Andrew Rich. Fifth in points, Hunter Braxton has mi made every race. Eleventh in points, Enzo Nareza. Fifteenth in points, James Ellison. 17th in points, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. 19th in points, Seth Cole got that runner-up finish after, and then blew the motor right after the line. Um, Alan Cavagnero, who's 22nd in points. 25th in points, Benny Watson. And finally, 28th in points, Cole Deaver. So those are the only 11 drivers who have made every race. And while we were away, you watched the battle on the racetrack, and Jonathan Zorlin flew it by Ryan Brommer for the race lead. Zorlin, who won his third heat race back at Coca-Cola, could be looking for his fourth heat race one of the season. If we look at our heat leaders on the season, Braxton's got five, Zorlin three. Dylan Young with three, and Dale Lightning with three. So those are your three or more heat winners. So here we are coming to lap five. No one has pit just yet. We'll go to the back of the field. As Marty Johnson has made his way up into 20th, as Baco Magora has fallen into the bottom four. And I've mentioned this a lot over the course of the season, but... Um, Chassis grip seems to be a big thing. Um, it seems to be, well, it seems to be a bigger thing when you have the tires, the tires are more, more, more wear. I can't get my words together here. When you've got, when you're closer to the end of the run, the chassis grip really comes in. So it seems that could be happening here with the 23 team. And for the teams like the 74, the 40, 54, and 13, because they're so poor on chassis grip, with these worn tires, they are, can re they're going really slow. But that has put Johnson up into 20th by about two seconds, and he's challenging Brian Tremblay for 19th, as Benjamin Ice will take 18th from the 45 car. 
Quinton Moore holding strong in 10th. Remember trying to make his first race in forever. His last race was at Dover. And after Dover, he was 14th in points. He's now fallen to 27th. So there's a team that's in the hole. There's still plenty of racing to go. After Burlington, we will be halfway through the regular season. And here we go. Pit stops here on lap five. It looks like everyone's coming down. And there's a wreck. Bobo Jones and Fitzwater get into it. Trying to come to pit road. Jones will get down. Fitzwater will go another lap. Everyone comes down pit road. So Fitzwater will go one more lap. Not sure how bad his damage is compared to the zero. But let's see what the strategy play here is. It looks like it's fuel only. I'm seeing fuel only for all. And Brommer will beat out Zorlin. No, Zorlin passes him right at the exit. Nanako's going to pass Rich. Let's see who the bottom four out are. It looks like it's Tremblay's down there with them. Tremblay's behind Beckett. On Jack and Cage side by side. Where's the zero? The zero retired. So Bobo Jones, who came into this race 16th in points, is going to miss his second race of the season. This guy Commons got some hood damage. So that means right now the three out are Jagger, Magora, and Tremblay. Beckett is currently in, looking to make. What I believe would be his fourth race in a row. If I'm saying that right. Yeah, I believe Beckett has made every race since Trenton. Trenton, Coca-Cola, and Papyrus. He has made all of those. He's closing in on Chris Wheeler for 47th in points of all things. So let's see what Fitzwater does here. He's not going to have to take as much fuel as he comes to pit here on the white. But I don't even see damage on him. He might have some right side damage, but otherwise his car looks fine. We'll see where he comes out. If he stays on track, that is. Yep. There goes Sorlin. And it looks like they're fixing the damage on the 39. How long do they spend on this thing? They could miss their first race of the season. And they're done. Done in a way is the 39. But where does he come out of pit road? There they are. There's the cutoff. The cutoff's right there. Tremblay, or Onjak is 18th at the line. And Brian Tremblay is all over the bumper. Of Sane Beckett for 20th. Sorlin looks like he's going to get this win. But the battle is on for 20th place between, between Tremblay and Beckett. Ooh, Brian Tremblay. Do you get it done, man? Do Does he get it done? We're riding on board with the 45. Tremblay. 31st in points still, I believe. Yes, indeed. He's got 11 points over Frodemar Ox. And Tremblay has missed three races on the season. It would be his fourth if he doesn't catch Sane Beckett. And no one took tires, so it's all about that, that uh, tire conservation from these seven laps. Is there anything Tremblay can do? Or does Sane Beckett have this in hand? From the bumper of the 74. Coming through the final corners. Jonathan Zorlin wins his fourth heat race of the season. 
And it looks like, ooh, it might be a drag race if Tremblay gets a run. No dice. Beckett's going to make his fourth race in a row. So Tremblay, Magora, and Jagger will miss out on the main event along with Bobo Jones. And with that, I'll see you guys for heat number two. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for heat number two here at Cape Cod. And, oh, man, the starting lineup for this heat race is going to make things interesting. Starting on the pole will be Enzo Nereza. Second, RJ Bishop, your winner from Coca-Cola. Third is James Ellison. Fourth, Nico Tringali. Fifth, Edwin Mendez. Sixth, Cement Oskin. Seventh, Alan Cavignero. Eighth is Seth Cole. Ninth, Zoe Fernandez, and 10th, Benny Watson. Dale Lightning starts 22nd, Johnny Gardner's 19th, um, Matthew Logan, I think, is 18th, and Dylan Young is 16th. So a lot of top-end cars at the back will be making their way forward. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And, yeah, so we had... Four different drivers from last week miss out on the main from Heat 1. I wonder if we'll see that here in Heat 2. Drivers, start your engine! We're bringing you a different angle here for the start of Heat 2. Green flag waves. We are underway. Who got a good jump? It looks like Tringali's one of them. Everyone's rolling. Tringali to the left side of Bishop for second. Yeah, but Bishop's going to clear, so that must mean Bishop's got a good car. We saw Rich battle side by side with Brommer for a few corners. But Bishop cleared Tringali with ease. Oskins to the left side of Ellison. This can be a treacherous part of the racetrack, depending... If you're three wide or not, and they are back here, and that's going to be contact. Baker gets into Dylan Young. Baran Oskis and Watson almost wrecked. Baker's got a heavy amount of damage. Dylan Young's got a decent amount of damage. Oh, no, that's heavy damage there. Dylan Young could be missing his first race of the season. My goodness, they were clean in Heat 1, but here in Heat 2, it's a different story. And look at Dale Lightning. Dale Lightning has already made his way towards the top 15. How about that? But Baran Osk has got into it with Watson. Baker was in there too. And when Baker returned to the racing surface, he got into Dylan Young. Young will maintain his position on the track, as will Baker. So neither driver pitting early. We'll see what that does for their chances of making the main event. Meanwhile, Nerez's got a bumper full of R.J. Bishop. Tringali in third, Ellis in fourth, Austin fifth. Let's talk heat wins with these top five drivers. Austin won back-to-back. -back. Nashville and Memphis hasn't won a heat race since. Tringali won his lone race back at Atlanta. Ellison won his lone back at North Wilkesboro. Bishop and Nereza haven't won a heat race at all. And we know Nereza came close to winning the main event at Martinsville, but Bishop is all over the bumper of Enzo Nereza. Could this be the swing for the 42 team since winning at Coca-Cola? Is this the swing towards top five finishes every week or contending for wins every week? We'll see here after lap two who's really got a good car. See, the best takeoff time was from Tringali.
Reminder that our next road course is Burlington. That's in Vermont. That will also be a standing start track, but that is much shorter than Cape Cod. Bishop going nowhere, still all over the bumper of Nereza. Go to the pit lane one cameras. They fly by the start finish line. Fastest lap time goes to Bishop. You can see him and the resin seem to be pretty even. But he's not giving up. Bishop's peaking. He's peaking there on that 20 car. How about Fernandez in eighth place right now? Colt Hudson in 10th. Young has made it back into 20, so even with a damaged car, Young very fast. Lightning started 22nd, he's up to 16th. And Baker even closing in. Your bottom four right now, Chris Wheeler, Daniel Voiles, Lucas Catano, and the eight, of course, of Cole Baker, as pre-mentioned. Young just inside that top 20. We, we talked about how there's only 11 drivers left who have made every race on the season. Bobo Jones is missing his second race after getting wrecked by the 39 in Heat 1. Could we see Dylan Young miss his first race of the season? Could this list shrink to 10? It's incidents like that that take you out of making it every week. And missing the race would be pretty costly for Dylan Young. It would sink him probably from second in points down to third. Um, looking at the standings, Young has a 67-point gap to Bright, so he definitely wouldn't fall down to fourth. Um, but Rich is only seven points behind him in the standings. Nerez is still leading, but still a bumper full of Bishop. We saw most of the leaders come to pit on lap five, coming to six. Fitzwater stayed out an extra lap, though. I believe that was because of his incident with Jones, and he was too far away from the access road. And Dylan Young has come to pit road. Here on lap three to four, we'll see if he fixes damage or not. I think he is fixing damage. Looks like he fixed damage and took fuel only. Giving himself some extra time to gain back time on those other drivers. And it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing he pit because here's here's his strategy. He's going to have an empty track. And he's going to be running a lot faster with an empty track than he would if they were in his way. See, his best time was still 18th on the board and he was running 20th. So, I mean, what are those guys running back here? 148s, 149s? Dylan Young could still make this race, but he's going to have to gain a ton of time. Seeing the Reza still trying to hold off RJ Bishop. She Bishop's trying to work an angle here. Is anyone going to pit on lap four coming to five? We'll watch here. So far, it appears the answer is no. And that is indeed the case. Young was 40 seconds back when he was leaving his stall on pit road. Bad. The focus is up here. Ooh, Bishop's peeking to the right of Nereza. Could he pass Nereza before his pit stop? Man, it's been an interesting battle here in heat number two. Ellison's actually creeping up towards Tringali. He hasn't been a fourth place holdup like Nanaka was in heat number one.
And I don't think we can see Young's lap time. See, yeah, because he was on pit road still. But we'll certainly see if he clears anyone when they pit. He'll also have an advantage. I don't know if the tires cool down that much when they go to pit road, but we know when, when you take fresh tires, it takes a lap for them to warm up. Here we go. Who's coming into pit road? Ooh, Austin's going to stay out a lap. So will Seth Cole. But everyone else will pit. One advantage for Young is he knows Cole Baker has damage to fix. But Austin and Seth Cole elect to stay on track. It should help them a little bit. For one, they're going to be in free traffic. There goes Nereza and Bishop. Ooh, Nereza puts the block on Bishop. And Tringali's going to get a decent run. Does Dylan Young pass anybody here? Matthew Logan with a poor stop. There goes the two. Baker fixes damage. It looks like he's going to miss this thing. Dylan Young's right here, but... This is kind of good for him. I don't think he was expecting to see Matthew Logan in front of him in 22nd. Katano's 21st. Voiles is now up to 20th. And oh man. Could the bottom two drivers in points make this race? Wheeler's in the top 20 as of this moment. Logan and Young got work to do in these last two laps. This has turned into an interesting race. Could our list be down to nine drivers? Here comes the 22 and the 15 on lap six. This should theoretically give the lead back to Nereza. As he continues to hold off RJ Bishop, Tringali closing up on the 42 now. And Cavagnaro is sitting in fourth. Here we go. Coming to the white flag in heat number two. Austin done with his stop. But he will lose the lead. He'll come out right where he was in fourth though. Actually, he's going to stay side by side with Tringali for a minute here. Logan is two seconds behind Katano, who's right behind Voiles. Does he have the time? It's going to be... Oh, ooh! Nereza took a bad angle there. That's going to help open the door for Bishop, but Bishop can't quite capitalize. Does Nereza get his first heat win of the season? It would be Toyota's second on the year. Remember, Toyota still hasn't gotten a win in the main event. And starting on the top two or on the pole at a track like this would be huge for a chance at their first win. Nereza's got a pretty good advantage here. We'll turn away. It looks like Young and Logan are not going to have the time they need to make this race. So the top two in points are going to miss out here at Cape Cod. And coming to the line, it looks like it'll be Enzo Nereza picking up his first heat win of the season here at Cape Cod International Raceway.
about Fernandez and Hudson with top tens here in their heat. And there it is, Logan. Catano, Logan, Young, and Baker will miss out on this race. So the top two in the point standings are missing out. How about that? Congratulations to Nereza on the win. The coin flip's going to matter a little bit more because you're going to have a half car length advantage on second place at the start of the event. With that said and done, I will see you guys in a few hours for the main event.